Many of you have asked about full frame versus cropped frame sensors. Let's have a look. Morning Internet. Let's talk crop sensor versus full frame. This is a question I got again this last weekend on a photography course, but um, it's something that comes through the office quite often is what should I get and specifically looking at a wildlife photography point of view. What does it mean? Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. There's books and books and websites uh, dedicated to this, but let's try and make it as simple as possible. What it is, crop sensor versus full frame, and what you need. Check this out. So, originally when we had film in the old days, we had 35 millimeter, which was simple. The, the film size was kind of set. You didn't get big film, small film for the general cameras we're talking about. So, a full frame sensor literally equals the same size as a 35 millimeter. Remember, we're making this nice and simple to understand. So a 35 mil sensor equals full frame. Think of it as this little rectangle behind me. That is full frame. Now, from a cost point of view, to try and get all the technology into the digital cameras that we are using, the images, the image sensors had to be made a little bit smaller, right? Hence, crop sensor. It becomes a bit smaller. Watch this. If I take. That, for example, so my blue square now is a crop sensor. It's a smaller sensor size, yes, compared to my full frame sensor. There's different ones. Nikon, Canon, and in some, your Canon 1D series had a different size sensor to the, the full, the, the crop sensor like the 7D, and then the Nikon crop sensors, the DXs, also had a different size. So you get different ones. You get another one, for example, like that. So you get different sensor sizes. In general, the two big ones, Canon you can multiply by 1.6, Nikon you can multiply by 1.5. But what does it mean? It simply means this. If I take the exact same image, same camera, same settings, on a crop sensor versus a full frame sensor, the crop sensor is going to look like it has more reach. Think of this. You take the same scene, you fit it into my white triangle, yes, my full frame. You now put that same scene in front of a crop sensor camera, it can only see a smaller area of it. However, and this is, the, this is a concept more than reality, what the camera then does, we just look at the final image, yes? We don't think, oh, but it's cropped down and up. We would take, and you kind of, in your mind, extrapolate that crop back up to a full frame size when you look at the image. You don't think when you look at your image, oh, what should I do? It kind of pulls it back up so it looks like it has a zoom factor, a crop factor, it gets you closer. Yes? So, if you're shooting on a Nikon crop sensor, you can times the zoom length you have by 1.5, and for Canon it's 1.6, except the 1D4, which is 1.3. Email me if you have questions, we can look at this. So, the crop sensor, which one should you get? The answer to that question is another question is what are you shooting more of? Are you shooting wildlife where you want that extended reach? Or are you shooting more landscape, interiors, where you want the wider reach? Make sense? If you are shooting, for example, let's do... You're shooting on a 600mm lens. You have a crop sensor camera on a Nikon that becomes 600 times 1.5 gives you a 900mm reach. Yeah? It's all fake, but it does work. I've tried this. I'm going to try and link this video, old one for you where I actually did this. I put a 600 mm lens on a crop sensor and a full frame, and you can see the difference in reach. So, what should you get? Here's the answer, and let's make this nice and simple. If you only have one type of camera, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. If you only have, let's say, a 7D and you buy yourself a new 7D, they are both cropped. So, you would know for your lenses that's what you have. If you have only a 5D or a D800 Nikon, for example, you're going to shoot wide. Yes, you're not going to have that multiplication factor, the crop factor of the lens. It's when you start having two lenses, sorry, two cameras, a crop sensor and a full frame, where you have to understand what the lenses will do on your cameras. Some will extend the reach, others will not. Now remember, there's a lot of variables around this, lots. You get lenses designed specifically for full frame, you get lenses designed specifically for crop factors. Some won't even fit on the different camera bodies. Um, it is a theory principle only, but when you're looking at buying your next camera, look at your budget and see, 
if a full frame and a crop sensor fits into your budget, ask yourself, what am I going to photograph most of? Do I need that reach? Do I want that reach? Then get yourself a crop sensor and go for the reach. Get that extra additional crop zoom factor in. If you want the wide stuff and you have the money and the budget to rent or then to buy the big bomb lenses, the 600, the 400, 2.8, go wide. Go full frame. There's pluses and minuses to everything. This is just an initial start. We are going to do a bit more of a technical look at this in future when we're looking at exact cameras and how and what they can do. But for now, full frame, no magnification. Your lens setting, your lens zoom is what you get. On a crop factor, you get that additional little extra reach because of the pull open to 35 more size. I hope that helps a bit. This is an intro. If you have questions, let me know. Hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, or go to the Wild Eye Facebook page and let's discuss. My name is Jerry, this is Wild Eye. I'll see you guys next time.